From abandoned whaling bases on Antarctica to houses with trees growing out of them, here are 11 remote abandoned places. Number 11, Ballarat, California. One of the most barren and remote ghost towns in the United States is certainly Ballarat, California. Located right next to one of the hottest and driest places on earth known as Death Valley, getting to Ballarat, California is an extreme challenge for anyone. Built as a supply point for miners moving from Nevada to California, this ghost town from the 1890s looks like it's just about ready to completely disintegrate into dust. During its peak in 1897, it housed roughly 500 residents with several saloons, hotels, and a Wells Fargo station. This city was named after an Australian immigrant who proposed that it should be named after the Australian gold town of Ballarat in Victoria. When mines in the area began to close, this town shut down. What makes this place even more creepy is that in the 1960s, Charles Manson and his family moved into a ranch nearby and graffiti this place. Any kind of major city around here just doesn't exist, and this is only accessible by a dirt road through the dry Mojave Desert. There's only one resident of this town crazy enough to still live here, if he's still alive. Number 10, Butuggy Chug. Pretty much everything in eastern Russia is extremely cold and remote, and there is no exception for this abandoned gulag work camp all the way in the Magadan Oblast region. If you got sent to this place when it was open, it was basically like a death sentence. If the extreme frigid weather of Mother Russia wasn't enough, you'd probably get ill from working in the deadly uranium mines all day. According to local legends, this particular valley where the mine is constructed is cursed because they would find skulls and bones of humans and all kinds of different animals here. Animals would walk around with no fur. It turns out that they were kind of right, and the whole valley is extremely radioactive from the uranium found here. Some claim that the camp is the final resting place for some 380,000 people who worked here for a 10-year period. The uranium was extracted with absolutely no protective gear, and the average lifespan of a worker here was only a few months, if they were lucky. Some others claim that this camp was basically designed for the slow and gradual destruction of each prisoner. This photo here shows the train tracks where imprisoned workers would push uranium ore with no physical protection, and this can make you imagine losing any hope for some kind of escape. Number 9. Deception Island Can you guess why this next place in Antarctica was abandoned? It's probably not exactly what you would think. Let's take a look. Deception Island is located at the very tip of Antarctica, just south of the Shetland Islands. Norwegians, who are no strangers to cold weather, attempted to settle on this cold and extremely remote island in order to hunt whales in 1906. This quickly became a focal point for gathering seal fur and valuable whale blubber. The whale population here was quite high and completely untouched by man. With access to new technologies and weapons, it was almost like shooting fish in a barrel for quite a while. There is plenty of fresh water on this island, plenty of fish to eat, and despite it being quite cold in winter, you could certainly live in this area. However, there was one key factor that would prevent them from making this a permanent settlement. The bizarre shape of the island is actually due to the fact that it's on the edge of a volcanic caldera. Once a huge volcanic eruption destroyed most of the colony, it was difficult to continue living here. In 1969, they decided that maybe this wasn't such a great island to live on after all. Many have also attempted to set up research stations here, but with no avail, like we see in this photo here of an abandoned British research station. Some visitors will come here occasionally, but the active volcano makes it nearly impossible to establish a permanent settlement. Number 8. Coleman Scott, Namibia Africa is home to their own creepy remote ghost towns as well. With discoveries of diamonds and other rare resources, small towns were built to keep up with supply and demand for these sought-after jewels. This ghost town was originally built to house miners of valuable gemstones that were found in this desert. German prospectors flocked to this area, hoping to strike it rich. The town began to diminish in population after World War I. The area was also hit by a windstorm, and this photo here shows how sand is beginning to reclaim the territory, slowly but surely. The site is popular for photographers who enjoy the way houses look buried under sand. Although it is sort of near a small airport, if you make it out here, you'll definitely feel like you're in a remote wasteland completely surrounded by desert sands. Many of the houses are surprisingly in good condition despite a whole century going by. Number 7. Holland Island 
This little eroding island right in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay is pretty difficult to get to unless you have a trustworthy boat. The island wasn't always this small, and at one point, it even had a small little fishing community established on its soil. Farmers were able to grow crops here and actually fend for themselves. In 1910, it had a population of 360 residents, which made it the most populated island in the Chesapeake Bay by a long shot. So what happened to it? The island faced many harsh conditions such as wind, rain, and the increasing tide. In 1914, many people had actually disassembled their homes and took them with them to the mainland. But this one house on the island stands as a reminder that people once lived on this land that's now pretty much underwater. Some believe that the island is basically disappearing due to the rising sea level and global warming. It's not completely abandoned, for the birds at least. Number 6. Accident Mine, Nevada what a great name for a mine. Sounds like something is just waiting to happen here. Many mines are located in remote areas, and here's a good example of some strange remote mines outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. These are very difficult to access, and getting here would require some serious off-roading. Even if you really want to get here, you probably shouldn't because it's where they use to mine hazardous things like lead and zinc. It's so remote that very few photos were actually taken that we can show you. Anyone else trying to get here would also have to travel through Dead Man's Canyon, which doesn't sound too appealing. The mine was probably more accessible back when it was used. Other places such as Good Springs, Nevada almost seemed like zombie towns and they were completely abandoned, but then slowly brought back to life with a little bit of tourism. Number 5. Attic Island, Alaska Sometimes, places become abandoned because they are so remote from the rest of the world. This island located in the eastern part of the Aleutian Island chain was once home to Alaska's southernmost town. It's been home to both native Inuit people, the Russians, and also the Americans. The harsh winds and cold temperatures certainly make it a challenge to live here. However, due to its strategic location after World War II, about 6,000 American military men who saw previous combat were stationed here. Fresh food was very hard to come by, very few women to comfort them, and the soil was quite difficult to cultivate any crops on. This was also about as close as the Americans could get to Russia, so it was an important piece of land to fortify. Today, only 110 people have decided to stay here, and U.S. Army buildings are now empty. The airport still remains in use, but it's certainly not an easy place to get to. Number 4. Port Lockroy Port Lockroy is another research station on the Antarctic Peninsula, and anything on this continent is pretty remote. A naturally forming bay was discovered in 1904, which was used for whaling originally, and would help whalers restock on supplies. During World War II, the British actually attempted to establish a military base here, but we all know how Antarctica is quite inhospitable. This was part of Operation Tabarin, which would allow them to establish bases in the remote areas of Antarctica. The British were also pretty worried that other countries were already doing this. A military base here turned out to be too costly and somewhat pointless. Finally, in the 1960s, it was turned into a research station. The buildings have lost all their original purpose, and some have been transformed into museums. Tourists are allowed to visit the site, but not not allowed to go too much further. Number 3. Abandoned House, Norway This abandoned house we see here in the photo was posted on Reddit and appears to be from Hemsedal Valley in the southern area of Norway. There is not a whole lot known about this exact house, however it appears to be an abandoned cabin. The area experiences a large amount of tourism, especially from skiers. Some houses in Scandinavia are known for putting sod on their roofs in order to keep them a little bit warmer during winter. Is it possible that some of the sod contains seeds to pine trees? What's interesting about this photo is that it's in a grass field and not somewhere in the mountains, but yet there's few trees randomly growing out through the roof. Maybe someone decided to put some trees on the roof for decoration. Whatever the case may be, the house is quite mysterious and is a good example of how nature reclaims your territory once man has left. Number 2. Soel, Chile Completely surrounded by the Chilean Andes Mountains, this remote abandoned place is found at the altitude of over 6,000 feet making it quite difficult to access. It was founded in 1906 by the Braden Copper Company in order to extract copper ore from the mountains. By 1915, the town was well organized with the addition of a hospital, a fire department, and a social club. The buildings were mostly made out of timber and were displayed with bright colors like we see here. The large town grew up to 12,000 people in 1918, and at its peak in the 1960s, that number grew to 16,000. Also known as the City of Staircases, it's built on the side of a mountain which certainly 
something made transportation by car a little bit tricky. It turned out that staircases were the best way for the inhabitants to get around. In 1967, the decline began when the Kennecott Copper Company lost ownership of the site and the Chilean government sought to control the land. Plus, most people were beginning to move to other locations where more copper was being found. The Chilean government decided to keep the city as a ghost town, and now it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You can actually explore this place quite well on Google Maps. A lot of the buildings still look to be in good condition, but you can tell no one's living there. And number 1. Pyramiden Possibly the most remote and the most abandoned place in the world would have to be the settlement of Pyramiden, located on the Norwegian territory of Svalbard. If you take a look at Svalbard on the map, you can tell it's really not close to much of anything. The Soviet Arctic ghost town was once prosperous due to large coal deposits in the area, but now that coal is gone since the 1990s. However, Norway has been hoping to turn this into somewhat of a tourist attraction. Not being situated too far from the regional capital of Longyearbyen, it's a quick hour drive by snowmobile or a few hours by dog sled. If you do decide to come here, be sure to dress warm and try not to get too spooked out by all the abandoned things here. 